breakdown. So map breakdown for day 231 of the war in Ukraine. Here is what we're looking at on the map. So the red on the screen is the assessed Russian advance. We got yellow on the map, which is claimed Russian control slash claimed Russian warfare between Ukrainian soldiers, claimed Ukrainian counteroffensives, which is going to be the blue on your screen. So the Oblast split. Here's the four Oblasts in the in the green on your screen. These are the four that Russia's annexed, aka stolen. Uh, you can see on your screen, even in the in the four green the four green circles or the however you want to shape them on the screen russia doesn't have full control over any of the four oblasts they recently stole from ukraine and they haven't even really stolen them it's all on paper their ukrainian military is gaining ground still even even after what happened today in ukraine yes it's a it's it's devastating for the ukrainian people to see their people killed and to see and to see this within their cities but the military ukrainian military is destroying the russian military still it's 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 uh it's still shocking to me i guess i shouldn't be shocked at this point but the russian response to ukrainian military success is to kill civilians like the they, they don't they don't respond by striking significant ukrainian military targets they're not now suddenly starting a new wave of counter offensives to the counter offensives they're not bolstering their defensive line they're not even trying to attack the ukrainian military they're weakening ukraine through killing their civilians and diverting resources backwards away from the front line beyond that the ukrainian military is still very much on these front lines conducting counter offensives on a daily basis moving into the russian territory territory and it's it's just time and time again and that hasn't changed so let's get into the eastern counter offensive so here's what we're looking at so here's where we're going in case this is one of your first map updates in case you haven't seen one so here's the eastern counter offensive here between Lehman, kupiansk and Izium. okay so again we're, we're going over here so this eastern counter offensive here is from this line the ukrainian controlled city of Lehman. we have some russian pushback here in the northeast all right, the Russians are fighting back a little bit on this RSP-66 highway between Kupiansk and Lehman. And then we have the city of Kupiansk right here. Okay, so Kupiansk counteroffensives, we can see the Ukrainians that are fighting and are getting closer and closer to this front line. Everything on the right side of this here, of this long green line, is going to be the Luhansk Oblast. And you can clearly see the Ukrainians in multiple locations are well within the Luhansk Oblast at this point, including, I forgot this counteroffensive here, from Severtsk when they took the city of Bilohorivka a couple weeks ago. Right now, we're seeing in the last 24 hours just some Russian pushback here, which is expected. Ukraine's got to get their, their units to the front line, fresh troops, equipment, uh, numbers, because this, this all happened very quickly, okay? And it just takes real time. They have uh, MRAP vehicles now. It's the all becoming the middle of October, so the ground is getting a little softer. It's difficult to move as quickly as they just were even just a month ago. But nothing suggesting they're slowing down. We're just seeing some Russian pushback here. And overall, in general, on this whole front line, the Russians are also holding some, some defensive positions here in the in the border between the Luhansk Oblast and the Kharkiv Oblast, just to the southeast of the city of Kupiansk. Also, what we're seeing here is a, 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 a grander scale version of what we saw on Lehman. You know, they did Ezium first with this Ukrainian blitz tactic of go, finding the weak spots, which is a lot easier. No, I shouldn't say, I don't know how it is, I guess. Forward observers was a physical act now, but nowadays they got the drones in the sky. They don't need to set, they don't need to risk their troops' lives to be on the front lines to observe where the weak spots Spots are now they can do it with drones in the air so they observe where the weak points are and then they blitz their military into that weak spot as fast as they can get as much resources behind the strong enemy lines but the, they get as far behind the enemy as they can and then they the enemies shot they're, they're surprised they're like well fuck how far behind are they I mean, and they're and the russian comms are ass already they get confused they don't know how far back the enemy is and then by the time they figure it out it's already time to either surrender to the ukrainian military or or hold on hold it down to the very end Right. This is the Ukrainian tactic. That's how they took the city of Lehman. And I'm seeing it here in Svadova as well in Luhansk Oblast. You can see this counteroffensive here from Kupiansk. This is this is heading right towards the, the border with Kharkiv and Lugansk. And Nizhny Duvanka is likely going to be the city that this counteroffensive here is going to be advancing towards. It's the Russian controlled city of Nizhny Duvanka. And this is the goal right now. And this is once the Ukrainians liberate this city of Svadova, this north this northern this 
northern region of Luhansk Oblast in, in general is going to break down. This, because that's the huge the huge stronghold okay right now we are seeing the russians push back a little bit which is expected it's expected to see R russians pushing back somehow they were able to bolster some of their troop lines likely brought them in from severe donetsk and lysyshansk so here's severe donetsk and lysyshansk and kremina which is the city that the ukrainians are trying to encircle here okay and then i'm going to circle the city of severitsk Severitsk is just down here, and you got the counteroffensives that are coming up here too. As you can see here, the, and I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna put the lines up through here because there hasn't been anything to suggest that they've slowed down. And and this counteroffensive here in Lehman, up here in this northeastern counteroffensive, we're seeing similar attempts from the Ukrainian military that they just did on Lehman. Here you got the Ukrainians attempting to insert themselves even further into this into into the luhansk oblast into uh kremina here right <laughs> sorry that's that's what their move is it's they they do a two-pronged counteroffensive into the city and it's it looks very <laughs> it looks it looks as i was saying we're seeing ukraine just insert themselves into the russian uh territory here in, in a couple spots okay you got a, the the one that's trying to encircle the city of kremina and then you have the ukrainian advancement from kupiansk down to Lehman. okay similar just just a a bigger grander scale version of what you're seeing here in kremina but it's the same it's looking like the same tactic that the ukrainians used in Lehman. okay same thing the front line has moved let's go to the deep state map shout out to every all the work the deep state does we can see the amount of changes in the the last 24 hours so you can see the front line changes so here's from the 9th bam there's the 10th so let's see how much how much space has changed in the last 24 hours so i'm gonna put a ooh, that's some that's some kilometers there oh a little under 10 kilometers of space from the ukrainian military in this counteroffensive. so again re reiterate the fact that despite ukrainian despite the the russian cruise missile strikes in these ukrainian cities the ukrainian military continues their advancement in the east down into this southern offensive by the russians Okay, we're going to go south now, and I'm going to use the Oblast split. So again, we got Donetsk Oblast here in this green, the Luhansk Oblast here on the right side of your screen. I'm going to circle Sphere Donetsk and Lysyshansk. Okay, here's Luhansk, here's Donetsk, Horlivka, Popozna, where the Wagner private military contractors are, are launching their counter or their offensives are. Keep in mind also, this isn't even the Russian military here in the in these offensives. This is their contractors, their Chechens, their their proxies are, are the only ones over here in this entire map of Ukraine. I know we're focused on one section, but in this entire map of Ukraine, the only area Russia is still attempting advancements in the entire country is the Bakhmut Edvidka front line. Right there. That's it. And it's not even their military. It's their, their contractors and their proxies. Their motivating factors are we're getting money. They don't need the, the motivating factors that Ukraine uh, is continuing to show with their, their resiliency. Right, Russia doesn't need resilience. These are those these forces here, specifically in that yellow circle on your screen. They don't need they don't need to be resilient. They don't need they don't need that shit. They just get they're getting guaranteed paychecks. So their motivating factor is being paid there. So again, the Russians down here on Bakhmut, they're advancing. They're still direct advancing directly onto the city, sacrificing lots of troop numbers in doing so. They're just throwing numbers at the that the Ukrainians here in Bakhmut, literal cannon fodder. But the Ukrainians are still holding down the city of Bakhmut, even here in Zadetsev. Yes, the Russians have have solidified control over the city, but yesterday we had reports that the Russians were on well on the other side of the T zero five one three highway here towards on. Drivka and Klitschnivka. The Russians have been pushed back here in this in this counteroffensive. Let me let me draw the circles and lines so you see what we're looking at. So there's Popozna, the direct Russian advancements through Zadetsev and Bakhmut, and then Solidar. The Russians have been you know, the attempts to advance have completely dissipated. They were able to cross that T1302 highway into the Nof Gips factory in Solidar, I'd say at the beginning of July. They haven't pushed any further, been eliminated every step of the way since they've tried to advance any further. So that just is done now. 
I don't even know if I can draw a line up there anymore at this point. They've stopped. This this advancement is still continuing. They're still ongoing. There's been some reports of civilians starting to evacuate from the western part of Bakhmut, but there again, there's no nothing reporting suggesting the Russians have advanced within the city beyond the eastern bank of Bakhmut. And then again, this is what I was referring to in Zadetsev. The Russians have pushed towards the highway. They were they were well on the other side of the highway, but the Ukrainian military has a with whatever force they have here the the you they're doing an excellent excellent job of holding this this down here not letting the russians push up and flank the city of bakhmut right here the city of zadatiev goes back and forth in the ukrainian military control and russian control it does so that is this is this changes nothing but beyond that the russians haven't had any successes on Bakhmut, they continue to try, continue to fail. And that's it for Bakhmut. Down to Advidka. We got the you, the Russian-controlled city of Donetsk. Here's the Russian-controlled city of Donetsk. The Russian offensives here in Pitsky and Marinka. And there's just nothing to report. <coughs> I could keep it as simple as that. I mean, we update this thing every day, update these Russian offensives. They pushed into Pervomyatsky about a week ago, a week and a half, maybe two weeks, week and a half to two weeks ago. Haven't pushed any further. They've been sitting here there. You can see with, you can see something very similar here that you're seeing the Ukrainians doing up in the North, but the Russians are failing. Russians are trying to push this front line from Donetsk out further so they can try to push Edvidka from the Southwest because these advancements onto Edvidka head on fail. Russians just throwing bodies at the Ukrainian artillery here and the Ukrainian defense lines in Edvidka, similar to Bakhmut. They've really been trying these cities and this areas for nearly a decade. Ukraine just accomplished in a, in a few weeks to a month, but Russia's been trying hard for seven or eight months at this point, but for nearly a decade. If you want to go, you want to go even further than that, because it's not like they weren't trying to gain territory from 2014 until the invasion. They definitely were. And this counteroffensive here from Zaporizhia to Donetsk, just not hearing anything on this this counteroffensive. We had reports of the Ukrainian military staging here, and I had guessed that it was likely to prepare a counteroffensive southward uh, towards Mariupol to cut those Russians off and their supply lines on the E40 highway towards the Kyrgyzstan Oblast. Just haven't heard anything from it yet. Nothing to report on it yet. The Ukrainians still hold the city of Uladar here. The Russians had mounted a, a counteroffensive to try to slow this, this Ukrainian uh, movement down. And just nothing else to report on here. Over here in Kyrgyzstan, and I have the, the, the split for the Oblasts for this one. Okay, so this is the Mykolaiv Kyrgyzstan line. Shows you how far the Ukrainian forces are in Kyrgyzstan. Ukrainian controlled city. Let me do a, a zoomed out version first so you, do, you can get the you can get the idea of where things are. So the, the Ukrainian controlled city of Mykolaiv, you got the Ukrainian controlled city of Odessa, Krivi Ry, Nikopol, which is just on the other side of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Inodahar, and then the, the capital city of Zaporizhia. Russia's shelled the city of Zaporizhia now for three nights straight. They've been they've been launching cruise missiles and artillery at this city now all, all through the weekend, and it's continued because they don't have control over it. This was and this was before Ukraine hit the bridge. Russia was striking Zaporizhia before Ukraine hit or before whatever you know before whatever happened with the Kerch Bridge. Russia's been shelling the city of Zaporizhia, so that's been ongoing because they don't have control over it, and that's their strategy to weaken Ukrainian cities. They kill the civilian populations and. Then they attempt to move their military. Haven't seen any military movements in Zaporizhia, but that's been traditionally their tactic. Shell all civilians that they can and then move their troops in with no rhyme or reason. It's not like it's not even you can't even compare it to what Ukraine's doing with their with their counteroffensives and their uh, encirclement of cities. Russia will send their troops in like they're doing a blitz, but there's no rhymes or reason to what they're doing. They're just kind of look seems like they're excited to be doing it, but then when they when it comes time to okay, it's time to operate now and do some troop movements and bound and shit, they don't have any idea what to do. They don't know how to shoot, move, and communicate. They don't have any radio. They don't have comms. They don't have any of that stuff. So when they're doing it, motivated for a few seconds, and we can bring up the invasion early on when they had pushed on the city of Kiev, when they pushed on the capital early on. We saw how their tactics worked when they when they get all excited right away. And then when they're in the shit, then all of a sudden Ukraine's hitting them with with some some curveballs. Or they now Ukraine's starting to their counteroffensives, and the Russian army has no answers. They immediately.
immediately duck and run and retreat, drop their weapons, retreat, drop their, they leave their vehicles in, intact without even destroying them and just hand them over to the Ukrainian military. This, the biggest supplier of the Ukrainian military is the Russian army because they're leaving back everything that they, they don't even destroy it, which is what we're taught in NATO for, you know, again, I served in the U S army, right? And one of the, one of the things that we learn is if we're going to leave anything behind like equipment, it's got to be destroyed. So the enemy can't use it. That's common sense or their fighting positions, which they leave in a shithole trash site on the ground. And there's trash all over the place. That's a no go too for us. We can't leave trash behind. Cause that's going to let the enemy know where the hell you are and how long you've been there. You, Russia doesn't even care about any of that. That's all important information. And Ukraine seems to have a grasp of it, but the Russian military doesn't. I went on a tangent there. But these these oblasts, I'll bring it back now, but these oblasts aren't even under full Russian control. So even an attempt to try to advance into here is likely going to get crushed by Ukrainian HIMARS and Ukrainian counter and Ukrainian artillery. What we're seeing here in the Kyrgyzstan Oblast, this is the line, this is the Oblast border line. So you can see their Ukrainian counteroffensives have advanced well within the Kyrgyzstan Oblast and they continue on. The specific one that we're still uh, trying to keep up with reports is the T-0403 counteroffensive as they just got through the city of Dudachny and they're trying to push on further likely having to deal with more bridges that are blown up along the way as the Ukrainians are pushing towards the city of Novokahovka. Okay, you're right. the Ukrainians are trying to the Ukrainians are trying to push towards Novokahovka, liberate that city. They've already shelled the They've already shelled the Novokovka hydroelectric plant and the Antonivsky bridge here in preparation to try to cut these Russians off that are north of this Dnipro River in preparation for this. Okay, and try to cut these Russians off here. Here's the Dnipro River. Also, I'm going to do the Inhluets River because this is a natural border line too. So here's the Inhluets River and the Ukrainians are trying to push. And this is my theory. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If, like I say, if the Ukrainians from Mykolaiv tomorrow morning wake up and they get orders to push on Kyrgyzstan, I'm gonna, guess what? I'll be I'll be happy to report that and say, yeah, I'm wrong. But right now it's looking like the Ukrainians are are pushing towards the city of Novokovka first so they can have control of this of this eastern flank of the Inhluets River. So that way these forces on the on the western flank don't get caught on the river side if the Russians have strong defensive lines here. So we're see, I'm thinking the Ukrainians are going to keep pushing towards Novokovka, liberate North Novokovka and the territory within this region of Kyrgyzstan. And then once they have control of this, then push towards Kyrgyzstan in a two-pronged counteroffensive from Mykolaiv and Novokovka. And they'll be able to push towards both because this, this counteroffensive, it's going to be a difficult counteroffensive towards Kyrgyzstan from the eastern bank of the Inhluets River because that's a two that's a they either got to go across the Dnipro southward which they're likely not going to or they're gonna they're gonna have to cross it on from the east bank to the west bank regardless they have to cross the Inhuets. so they got to take full control over one side of it and it, i'm thinking it's going to be this eastern flank of the river if you're enjoying these map breakdowns please give a thumbs up on the video make sure you're following us on facebook you're subscribed to the youtube channel these map breakdowns are posted every day at 2 p.m central time 3 p.m eastern i am live every night at 8 p.m central 9 p.m eastern in which i do a three hour live stream doing a full map breakdown going through all the latest combat footage within ukraine and going over all of the latest news that has come out throughout the day i'm andy mercado from mercado media thank you guys again for supporting independent media and i'll see y'all on the next one